you just caught me on my way to Ryan's house. I'm going to let him borrow this amazing new book I got. I'm so excited to see what he thinks. Oh, wait. Do you guys want to read it too? Of awesome. I guess I have some time to read it to you real quick. So hang on tight as we dive into the world of Hansel and Gretel. Welcome to Ryan's world. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, in a magical forest, two sisters lived with their mother, me. That's right, I'm playing the twins mommy. I'm a little nervous, I've never been a mommy. What if Emma and Kate don't like the clothes I pick out for them? What if I forget when their bedtime is? How do I make sure they're getting enough vegetables? Oh, <clears throat> right, sorry, the story. Anyway, our little family took on many odd jobs to make ends meet. Window cleaning, tree chopping, gerbil wrangling, fern deferning, horse whispering, shoelace tasting, candle sniffing, <sniffs> legal counseling. You name it, we've done it. But our most favorite job of all, and the one that brought in the most money by far, was strawberry picking. We were the best strawberry pickers in the whole country. One day, we'd gotten back from a particularly fruitful day of strawberry picking. See what I did there? Fruit full. Like we got a lot of fruit? That was funny. The point is, we had a ton of strawberries. I stepped out to make a call, leaving Emma and Kate alone with the fruit, which I would soon realize was a big mistake. These strawberries sure look tasty, said Emma to Kate. I know, replied Kate, but Mommy says they're for selling, not for eating. Well, said Emma. How can we know if they're good to sell if we don't try one? Hey, you're right, Kate replied. We'd better try one, but only one. And each of the twins ate one strawberry. But the strawberries were so juicy, so flavorful, so delicious, they couldn't stop themselves. They ate another and another and another until there were no strawberries left. Uh-oh, said Kate, upon realizing what they had done. Uh-oh is right, I said, re-entering the room. You two ate all our strawberries. We were supposed to sell those. Hey, I'm getting pretty good at this parenting thing, huh? Tough love, mom of the year right here. The twins, to their credit, fessed up and took full responsibility. And what's more, they offered to go out and pick new strawberries to replace the ones they ate. Wow, so mature. They grow up so fast, don't they? <laughs> so Emma and Kate headed out into the woods to find more strawberries. Kate wisely took a bag of breadcrumbs with her to leave a trail so they could find their way back home. As for me, I went to the kitchen to make a snack for myself. All this talk of breadcrumbs and strawberries has gotten my tummy rumbling. As I whipped up a healthy little snack, I listened to the evening news. Attention, said the reporter on TV. Special bulletin. All residents of magical woods in the faraway kingdom should be on the lookout for this woman. Reports indicate that this witch wants to turn children into gingerbread cookies so she can eat them. Be on alert. And whatever you do, do not send your children into the woods. Hmm, I thought. Maybe hold off on that Mother of the Year award. Emma! Kate! I hollered as I burst forth from the house. But the twins were already gone into the woods, and more alarmingly, their breadcrumbs were being snatched up by birds. I couldn't track them, and they wouldn't be able to find their way back. Oh, no! Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, Emma and Kate had wandered deep, deep, deep into the forest, where barely any sunlight penetrated the thick leaves above. Uh, Emma? asked Kate. Are you getting some kind of weird vibes from this part of the forest? What do you mean? asked Emma. Well, all the trees seem to have angry faces on them, and all the animals look angry too, and even the moon looks angry. Ah, oh, you're just being paranoid, Emma replied. Besides, we've got your breadcrumb trail to lead us home when we need to. It was at this moment, however, that the girls learned they did not, in fact, have the breadcrumb trail to lead them home. Hey, the birds ate all our breadcrumbs, said Emma. Huh, lucky them, said Kate, rubbing her rumbling tummy. I'd sure like some food. It was at this moment, as if by magic, an intoxicating aroma wafted their way. It smelled of chocolate, cinnamon, caramel, molasses, and more. It smelled like every delicious smell the twins had ever smelled before, and several smells never before smelled by smellers of any sort. What is that? wondered Kate dreamily. Look! shouted Emma. And suddenly, the twins beheld a glorious sight. The sunlight shone down on a magical house made entirely of candy. The front door was pure milk chocolate. The shingles on the roof were peppermint bark. And the windows were pulled taffy. Even the smoke puffing out of the chimney appeared to be blue cotton candy. I call dibs on the doorknob, called Emma as she ran towards the house. Wait, said Kate. Doesn't this seem a little fishy to you? No, said Emma, already chewing a piece of the door. It seems chocolatey! <laughs> Convinced Kate joined Emma at the house, and they began to eat the delicious treats. They were so busy gobbling up the delicious candy house, they didn't even notice. The witch was approaching behind them! <laughs> the witch swiftly trapped the twins in a cage! Coco! The twins exclaimed in surprise. Uh, not Coco, said the witch hurriedly. I'm an evil, scary witch, remember? Oh, oh right. right! The twins replied. They began calling for help, but it was no use. The witch brought the twins into her candy cottage, where she pulled out a giant twin-sized mixing bowl and began prepping the ingredients needed to turn the twins into gingerbread cookies. You can't turn us into gingerbread, called Kate. Yeah, said Emma. At least make a snickerdoodle. That's my favorite. There's no use arguing, said the witch. This fairy tale was written hundreds of years ago. There's nothing I can do to change it now. The twins sulked. The witch had a good point. Now, the witch went on. Who wants to be turned into a cookie first? All you have to do is climb into the magic mixing bowl here, and poof, you're instantly transformed into a cookie. That's when Kate came up with a brilliant plan. A magic mixing bowl? Kate said skeptically. No way, I don't believe you. Believe it, the witch said. It'll turn you into a cookie good. Emma, catching on to the scheme, joined in. Yeah, right, Emma said. I bet that mixing bowl won't do anything. I bet it's just a normal old bowl you bought from a catalog. Ah, the witch said, growing steamed. I'll show you. Watch. Then, to demonstrate, the witch herself climbed into the magic mixing bowl. And indeed, 
instantly went poof and turned into a gingerbread cookie herself. The twins' brilliant scheme had worked, and it was at just that moment that I, Mommy of the Year, burst into the house. I'd tracked them by following my keen sense of cat smell, which led me straight to the candy cottage. I released my beloved children from their cage, and we headed towards the door. Uh, said the witch gingerbread cookie. I don't really have to stay like this, do I? We assured her that she'd be transformed back into her normal Coco self as soon as the credits rolled. That's the magic of animation! I hugged my twins tight, and we walked home, happy to be reunited. And the witch never bothered anyone again. In fact, she changed her ways, allowing children free reign to come and eat from her candy house any time they pleased. Aw, what a happy ending, right? I can't wait to see what Ryan thinks, so I have to get going. Thanks for joining us on our fairy tale adventure. See you guys next time.